Hi, welcome back. I'm going to do some problem solving from the end of the chapter, end of chapter uh, 13, gravitation, universal gravitation. And so, let me read this problem here. It's number 28. It says, a new planet is discovered orbiting the star Vega in a circular orbit. The planet takes 55 years to complete one orbit around the star. So let's just draw something. So here is the star. This is the star. And this planet is here. And it goes around the star. And it completes... Uh, this is the radius here. And it completes uh, one uh, period, uh, one circle in a period, um, uh, let's call it T2 here. It is 55 years. 55 years. All right. And let's call this planet here, it would have a mass M, mass planet. And the radius is R. So the, the mass of this star, mass of this star is 2.1 times the mass of the, uh, the mass of the sun. So the mass of this star is equal to the mass of, uh, is 2.1 times the mass of the sun. All right, 2.1 times the mass of the sun. So it's heavier. And the question is, what's the radius of the planet's orbit? R is how much? Okay, R is how much? Well, to do this, uh, we can compare it to Earth orbiting the sun. So here is Earth. Uh, here is Earth. Uh, I'm sorry, here is the sun. And here is Earth. This is the distance from the Earth to the sun. And let's assume for a moment the orbit from, oh, it's nearly circular, the radius from uh, the Earth to the sun. And uh, we know this, we know the mass of the sun, it is ms, mass of the sun, we can look it up. And uh, we know that the period here, T1, is equal to one year. Okay. Any relationship between the period and the, and the time, uh, and the radius, the answer is there is. So let me just do some work on the, on the whiteboard and then come back here. Just to remind you, of uh, Kepler's uh, second or third law? I think it was the third law. Third law. So if you have a circle, so here is a mass capital M, and this is mass little m, and this is the radius, and it goes around like so. If it's in circular motion, then we know that the net force on it by Newton's second law is equal to ma. The net force is toward the center, and the acceleration is also toward the center. The net force, as usual, is G, capital M, little m, divided by the radius squared. And this is the mass. Since it's circular motion, it would be the velocity squared over, the, over, the, over R. But the velocity is 2 pi R divided by the period, the time it takes to do one circle. The distance is 2 pi R, and the period is T. So this is the velocity squared, but I have to divide by the radius. You see the mass cancels. I'm doing this quickly because we have done it already a few times. So I have uh, G capital M divided by R squared will equal to 4 pi squared R squared divided by the period squared. And I have a 1 over R here. So one of those cancels. And uh, if we cross multiply, we get the period squared will equal to... Um, um, would equal to 4 pi squared g over m g over m and then r cubed all right and so it's proportional to uh the, the square of the period is proportional to the the cube of the radius all right so we have this okay so let's go back to our problem and I'm going to refer to this. I will draw. I will write this equation first for the for the new planet orbiting the star, and then the Earth orbiting the, the sun. So let let's just copy this equation here. So for the planet orbiting the star, it would be t two, and then here this is the mass of the star, 
and this is the radius of the plane. So we have T2 squared is equal to 4 pi squared divided by Gm. Gm. But m is the mass of the star. m is the mass of the star. Uh, times r cubed, the radius of this planet, to the cubic power, to the third power. And uh, let's clean this a little bit. So we have um, T2 squared would equal to 4 pi squared divided by G. But the mass of the star is 2.1 times the mass of the sun. So I put 2.1, the G, and then the mass of the sun here. And then the radius of the planet cubed, like so. And now I'm going to write the same equation, but for the Earth orbiting the sun. So T2, T1, Earth orbiting the sun squared, is equal to 4 pi squared divided by G, the mass of the sun. I'm just writing this. And then the radius from the Earth to the sun. Cubed. We're going to divide these two equations together. So when you divide them, uh, so this over this, the f there is a 4 pi squared here, 4 pi squared here. They cancel the G, the G, the MS, the MS. And then I just have the 1 over 2.1 on this side. So T2 over T1 squared, we can write it as T2 over T1, the whole thing squared, is equal to uh, 1 over 2.1. And then here, radius of the planet cubed over the radius of the Earth cubed. That can be written as the radius of the planet divided by the radius from the Earth to the Sun, the distance from Earth to Sun. Cubed. All right, uh, we're almost there. Now the period for this planet is 55 years. What's the period for the Earth orbiting the Sun? Well, it's one year. So this would be 55 years over one year, that's just 55. And so I have 55 squared and multiply by 2.1 on both sides. So I have 2.1 times 55 over 1, the whole thing squared, will equal to the rp over r earth to the sun cubed. So now uh, you got this, you square it, you multiply it by 2.1, and then you take the cubic root. So the radius of this planet divided by the radius of the earth to the sun will be the cubic root of this thing, would be 2.1 times 55 squared, and then we have to take the cubic root. So take it to the one-third power. Uh, where is my calculator? Right there. Let me get it. So I get 2.1 times 55 to the second power, and then the whole thing to the one-third power. Take the cubic root. So I get 18.52. So in terms of the, the distance from the Earth to the Sun, the distance from this planet to the star is 18.52 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. So it's about 19 times. I think they said, what's the radius of the planet? Give your answer as a multiple of the radius from, uh, of the Earth's orbit. Yeah, I think that's a nicer way, yeah, which is good. At least we don't have to plug in these numbers. They are really large numbers. And uh, I like to work with symbols, and you should also. Because working with numbers is, I mean, yeah, we should get uh, a feel of how the numbers work, but at the, but then you would just get like, uh, you just get powers of 10 and they get mixed up and uh, I think the expression is worth more. Okay, let me go to um, the next one here. Uh, let me read it first. Uh, in fact, um, yeah, let, 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 me, let me get here. So it says, you have two spherical asteroids. They have the same radius. And asteroid 1 has mass m, and asteroid 2 has mass 2m. OK, so let's draw them. Here is 1. Here is 2. This one has mass 2m. And this one has mass m. And both of them have radius r. 
So the, this radius here is capital R. And the same thing for this one. But this one is R also. So they have the same radius, but this one is twice as heavy. So this one is denser than this one. All right. That's fine. Uh, the two asteroids are released from rest a distance 10R from each other. So initially, they are here. The separation between them is 10R. 10R. And uh, their initial speeds are zero. So both are not moving. Their initial speeds are moving. So from rest. Release from rest. Okay? Sounds good. Uh, so if they are released from rest, uh, what happens? Well, they will go to, uh, towards each other because we know this attracts this one and this one attracts this one. So they meet somewhere in the middle. In fact, they will meet uh, somewhere here uh, near the... This one is heavier, so the, the center of mass is somewhere here. You see, there are no external forces, so the center of mass will not move. Okay, And since there are no external uh, forces... And, uh, and no non-conservative forces also, uh, the, we expect the momentum and energy to be conserved. So we'd like to know their speeds. Let the speed of this one be uh, V, uh, well, this one is V1. Uh, actually, let me draw another picture. So they would collide with each other. So they, they would come here and then collide with each other. And when they collide, how far are they? Well, they are... They are touching here, but their centers are, this is an R, and this one is an R, so they are a separation of 2R, but this one will be moving at V2, and this one will be moving at V1. At V1. So, um, let me write, I will use conservation of energy, I would say the total energy at the beginning, total mechanical energy at the beginning, will equal to the total mechanical energy at the end total mechanical energy at the end. So at the beginning, they had no kinetic energy, but they only had gravitational potential energy. And if you remember, the gravitational potential energy is negative G times the first mass, M1, which is capital M, times the second mass, which is M2, and it has mass twice the mass, 2M, divided by the separation between them, which is 10R. That's the separation between and that's it. There was no kinetic energy, nothing. For this one here, you would have the energy at the end would be the potential energy at the end, which is negative G times the first mass times the second mass, which is 2M, divided by the separation between them, which is 2R. Sounds good. But then each of them would, has, would have a kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared for the first mass, and then V1 squared. And then plus one half, the second mass is 2m, and then v2 squared. And you would realize that at this point here, uh, we cannot go uh, much further. Uh, actually, I would take this to the other end. I, actually, I would divide everything by m, 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 and then m. And here, the one half. And the two cancels. Okay. And here I have, oh, I have a two here and a two here. And a two here, and this one becomes a fifth. So I would have uh, minus G. I canceled this M, but I have this mass. M over five. When you move this to the other side, it becomes a plus. Uh, G capital M over R. And uh, what is gm over r minus, oh, I forgot the r, minus one-fifth gm over r. So you get one minus one-fifth, that's four-fifths. So this is, uh, this is equal to uh, four-fifths, four-fifths gm over r, but this is equal to the right-hand side, which is one-half v1 squared plus v2 squared. So now I have two unknowns. I can't really proceed until I have a second equation. The second equation will come out from the, from the momentum. 
from the conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum would say the initial momentum has to equal to the final momentum. The initial momentum, uh, so P initial total, P initial total would equal to P uh, final total. Initially, they weren't moving, so there was no momentum, so zero. When they were moving, one of them is moving to the left, and the other one is moving to the right. The one moving to the right, I would call it positive, so it would be the first mass times D1, and then minus the second mass, because it would be moving to the left, so 2M V2 uh, equal to zero. And so we conclude that um, if you move this to the other side, you get basically V1, would equal to twice v2. And I'm going to call uh, uh, v2 just v. Uh, or let, let's just do it like that, twice v2. So we go here, every time you see a v1, replace it by a v2. So you come here and replace it by a v2. So let's see, you have 4 fifths g m over r equals to one half. Instead of V1, I would write twice V2, twice V2 squared plus V2 squared. So I have four fifths G M over R equals to, when you square this, you get a four, but four over two is two, and then two plus one is three. So I get three V2 Square. Divide by 3 and then take the square root. So you get v2 would equal to, if you divide by 3, you get 415. 4 over 15. And then g m over r square root. We can separate this into 4 over 15 g m over r, like so. And you can take the square root, you can just leave it like this or take the square root. I think they, uh, let me see what they want. Uh, I believe, uh, I forget what the question said. What is the speed of each asteroid before they collide? Yeah, uh, in terms of the G and the M and so on. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's good. That's the expression for it. Uh, I, I have here in the solution, what they do is they take the square root of 4 fifteenths and write it as a number. As a, as a decimal, so it becomes uh, uh, 0 0.516, 0 0.516, the square root of g m over r. And of course, v2, I'm sorry, this is v2, so v1 would be twice that, so it would be 1 point something, 1.032. Okay? One of them, this one is moving to the left, and the other one is moving to the right. All right, that's this one. And now, um, uh, I want to do basically two more examples. Yeah, let's just do two more, and, uh, and that's it. I might leave that one there. Uh, actually, let me just write it here. We have P squared is equal to 4 pi squared over GM and then R cubed. It happens so often that, I mean, it's easy to derive, but it happens so often that it's worth having. So let me get rid of, actually before I get hasty and get rid of it, I will leave it for a moment. So let's go to the next uh, problem. Next problem, yeah. Uh, by the way, the problem I just did, uh, this one here is problem number 48 from the book. This one was number 48. So now I want to do number 57. Number 57. So for number 57, it says two planets of mass M are orbiting a star of mass capital M. So here is a star, yeah, I, I probably should erase, and I should check the timer also if it's 30 minutes or not, okay, uh, 20 minutes, okay. So you have two planets, they're orbiting a star of mass capital M, 
So here is the star of mass capital M. And these planets, this one is mass little m, and the other one is mass little m. They're always opposite to one another, and they're just orbiting. When this one moves this way, this one is moving this way, and they always maintain a distance here, uh, r. r. And they move in circular motion. So this is moving in a circle of radius r, this one is moving in a circle of radius r, and the question is, uh, what should be the period? What, what would the period be, right? In terms of their masses, so this mass, this is mass little m, this is mass little m, and they're orbiting this star. Well, uh, let's consider one of them. Let's say this one here. What are the forces on this one? Well, there is the, the force from this mass this way, and the force from the other star or the other planet also attracting it this way. So there are two forces this way toward the center, and it's going in circular motion, so the net force equal to ma. So let's see. So you get the net force will equal to the mass times the acceleration. The net force consists of two forces, and they're gravitational. The first force is due to the, to the star in, at the center, and that is G capital M little m divided by the separation squared. They are separated by a distance r, so just r squared. And then plus the force due to the two masses attracting one another, that other mass on the right attracting the mass on the left. So little m times little m twice, divided by the separation between them squared, but they're separated by a distance r plus r, which is a 2r. 2r. And that should equal to the mass times acceleration. So that's the mass. The acceleration is v squared over r, because it's a circular orbit. The radius is r. So this mass will orbit this. So it would be, the speed would be 2 pi r over the period, and then you divide by r, because it's v squared over r. So it's 2 pi r over the period, but you have to square it. This is v squared, and divide by r. What happens is uh, the mass cancels, and so here you have a g capital M over r squared plus g little m divided by 4, 4 r squared, right? Because you squared it here. And here you would have 4 pi... Uh, 4 pi squared r squared divided by the period squared and you have 1 over r. This cancels. I want the, to calculate the period, so let me uh, uh, factor out a um, the g and the r squared here. So I would have g over r squared is, uh, times What's left here is just m plus, in here that what's left is little m over r, uh, over 4, I'm sorry. Let me multiply both sides by the period, so I have t squared is equal to 4 pi squared r, like so. Multiply both sides by r squared, so you will get, I will just do it right here, multiply both sides by r squared, this becomes an r cubed, and divide both sides by Oh, um, uh, no, this one would stay there. Divide both sides by this to solve for t squared and take the square root. So t would be 4 pi squared r cubed divided by g capital M little m over 4 under the square root. That's that. Well, that's, that would be their period, the period of each planet, if it's a circular orbit. Okay. In this next example, it says, a satellite in a circular orbit of radius r has a period capital T. A satellite in a nearby orbit with a radius slightly larger, r plus delta r, where delta r is much less than r, has the very slightly different period capital T plus delta t. So let's say if the radius of this orbit, let's say, is 1,000 kilometers, and this one is 1,000 kilometers plus delta r, let's say delta r is... 10 kilometers, what would be the period of this one? And they want us to show that delta t over t is approximately 3 halves delta r over r. To do that, I'm going to remind you of two things. First, this expression, 1 plus x to the nth power is approximately 1 plus n x, okay. provided that x is much less than 1. That's uh, 
called the Taylor expansion or binomial expansion. You can look it up. Um, and then uh, also the period, which I wrote here, is t squared equals to 4 pi squared g over m t uh, r cubed. So it's so we get t squared equals to 4 pi squared over g capital M uh, r cubed. Right. So if you have there is capital M and this planet has mass M and it's orbiting it, and this is r planet or satellite or whatever it is. So I'm going to answer uh, or solution the uh, old, uh, so that's the, the period for the planet, uh, the, the, the satellite that's orbiting at an, uh, a radius r. How about the one that's orbiting at a radius r plus delta r? We'll call it t prime. And it will have a period of, we have to take the square root of both sides, so it would be um, the square root of 4 pi squared is just 2 pi divided by the square root of gm and then uh, r to the 3 halves power. But the radius of this new period, which is capital T plus delta T, is, uh, is not r, it's r plus delta r, r plus delta, delta r. Delta R. Uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah, it is R. That's what they want us to show. So now, uh, this looks like this. See, R is much larger than Delta R, and I want to use this approximation. So what I will do is I will factor an R out. I will factor an R out. Let me show you. So you got T prime will equal to 2 pi. When I factor an R out, it becomes R to the 3 halves divided by gm square root. And I factor this r, so I get a 1 here, and here I have delta r over r to the 3 halves power. To the 3 halves power. You, you can see it. If you, uh, if you put this back in, you will get this one back. Okay? So now I'm going to use my... Uh, oh, uh, let me just take the square root of both sides here. So t will equal to 2 pi over g m square root, and this one will be r to the 3 halves. So this part here is just the period, is the original period, capital T. So t prime will equal to capital T, this whole thing is capital T, times, I'm going to expand this, I'm going to use that. You see, delta r over r Delta R is much less than R, so delta R over R will be much less than 1, so I could use that. So I have 1 plus, the power, the N is the 3 halves, and then the uh, delta R over R will, be, will take the role of the X over there, so delta R over, over R. Delta R over R, right? And uh, so T prime here, this new period, will equal to... Uh, capital T, the original period, plus 3 halves delta R over R times the period here. And we're going to call this whole thing here delta T, because the new period is capital T, the original period, plus delta T, some change in the period, this one. So we get, th that's delta T. So let's divide delta T by T. So delta T divided by t will be what? Uh, 3 halves delta r over r times capital T. That's delta t divided by t. So the only thing that cancels is the t. And so you have 3 halves delta r over r as, as wanted. And this approximation formula, we will, it, you will use it a lot this semester and actually next semester also. So that's that. They have a different period. So if, for example, if both satellites, if the first one is here and the other one is, and the other one is, is here, they started here, as they turn around, as this one completes one period, this one will be lagging behind. And um, eventually it will lag behind and lag behind until it lags behind by a whole period. And so uh, for part B, they ask you how many, how long will it take? 
Well, you get delta T over T uh, is, uh, is this. And so they ask you how long would it take it to uh, lag behind by one period. Th they give you the two periods. And so it's a, I will leave it for you as an exercise for part B. Uh, if you're not sure, you can ask uh, the question. Okay, I will see you when we do chapter 14, fluids.